With a stroke of luck, the house recently installed security cameras. I bet if we look at those tapes, we can get a sense of who was coming and going the night of the party. Great. Let's do that. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. This one shows the front of the house. Let's see what it shows. Well, I guess this was a bust. No one's here. Not so fast. This one shows the back of the house. No one again. Maybe no one did come back to the house. Back? Well, I mean, you are questioning the family, so I have to assume whoever is involved left the party and then came back. Astute observation. I suspect that our suspects left the party and came back in the middle of the night, wishing to be unseen. Luckily, I got one more tape here that shows the drive up to the house. Bingo! Just like you thought, someone who wanted to avoid being seen at the front and back of the house was coming up along the drive. Look at the time. Midnight. Our suspects come back, unseen, to the scene of the crime. Well, what do we do next? We retrace their steps. So we know someone left the party, and... Everyone, I assume, left through the front door and then headed towards town. That was dark out. We know the person came back to the house, up the right side of the path, unaware of the camera. Now, if you were trying to come back to not be seen, where would you go? I don't really know. I guess I never really thought about it. Well, hello there, secret door. Where does that door lead? Oh, that's the old cellar door. No one's been down there in ages. Any particular reason why? Oh, it's disgusting down there. Plus, a family of raccoons has claimed it as their territory. Well, let us pay these raccoons a visit, shall we? Is this it? Yep. How do we get inside? You just have to push on it really hard. Just push it? Doesn't seem like the most secure feature, does it? Oh, there's a door inside the house that locks from the inside. It keeps the raccoons out. A sensible feature. All right, you have to be really loud so the raccoons don't get you. So, the door to the house is right up here, so we can go right up 
What? What are you looking at? Dirt. Leaves. When was the last time this floor was clean? Oh god, I don't know. It's been ages. And, and the house? Oh, it gets cleaned at least every week. Benjamin is a wicked neat freak. He has to clean it at least every week so it's perfect so it doesn't mess up his shock. The entrance and fell for sure. When's the next cleaning? Today, I think. We have no time to lose. Let's go. We can't go in that way. It blocks from the inside. Let's see where the stall leads. So where does this door lead to? Right here. It's just into the drawing room where we were before. I was wondering where this door led. Right. So be careful of the chessboard. But this is the door. The door right here. Mm-hmm. Yahtzee. This is just what I was looking. I can guarantee you that this dirt right here matches the dirt that's in there. Great. That means whoever came in that night came through the cellar door and up through the drawing room. <laughs> that our intruder likely came into this room, sat the ransom note on this table right here as they came through the room. The game is afoot, eh, hey, Watson? Yeah. A mystery person then had to find Jacqueline. Miss Miller, where's her room? Right behind you. Then up we go. All right, so it's right up here, but make sure you watch your head. Oh, All set? Yep, everything's set. Police statement said this room was a mess. I did not expect this. Done here. Now, judging by the state of her room, our mystery intruder must have kidnapped Jacqueline, dragged her downstairs, through the drawing room, through the cellar, then down the driveway without being seen by the security camera. If you ask me, Miss Miller, that all seems a little bit unrealistic. More like a plot to a story than real life. Well, you're the detective. I mean, have you ever had a case like this before? <sighs> Known as improbable. I tell you, I am the police. Tell me, Miss Miller, you've been in this house a long time. Do you mind answering some questions for me, truthfully, of course? Yeah, of course. I can know if you're lying. I can tell, tell the truth or not. It's a sense I have. Now, the knife that was used by Maisie was the same knife as that ransom knows. Remember, Maisie had that knife the night of the party. She even showed it to me in question. I also know that Maisie likes to make trouble. Possible that she's involved in Jacqueline's disappearance. Oh, I can imagine. Maisie, she absolutely loves her grandmother, and she's only 13. I couldn't expect any child to be capable of that. That does sound unlikely. What about Eleanor? She was heard having an argument with her stepmother right before. There's no great love between them. She's much more like her father than her mother. She heard that possibly she was getting cut out of the will, not gonna receive any Klaus's money. You think she could have lashed out at Jacqueline? 
No, no, no. She was never in it for the money. She absolutely loved her father. That They were so alike. That's where she got all of her volunteer work, all of everything that she really cared about was from him. Are you sure? Because she certainly lied to me about that. I said it was something about catering. You know, I know when someone's lying. Take, take me, for example. She had a fight with Jay just the day before the party. She lied about it. What are you talking about? Even Jacqueline. The big blow up the night before the party. She said something along the lines of, You'll see. One day I'll get what I want. Uh, sounds a lot like someone who's after that money. Oh. Now, no, I propose. <sighs> she wanted to change who controlled the family's finances. You think Maeve could have possibly wanted Jacqueline out of the equation, get one person out of the way, make her way to the top to control the family's finances? Never. I can never picture Maeve doing that. As hard as she may be, her, mo- her and her mother were two peas in a pod. They were inseparable. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. You do seem to be the eyes and ears of the eyes. Yeah, but why haven't you been asking about Benjamin at all? Seems like you're only scrutinizing the women of this family. I think you and I both know that the women run this family. I don't think he's smart enough to run a caper of this magnitude. I don't think we do either. Yeah, you're right. But who else would have motive then? I do not know. But I have an idea. Let's go read her will. Whoever was getting the money probably have the most motive for her disappearance. Jacqueline's will? Yes, of course. Oh, the money isn't in Jacqueline's will. Klaus set up a trust just before he disappeared. It's all in his will. She controlled the trust but after his disappearance, but other than that, she can't touch the money. Well, that does change the game. We need to look at that will immediately. You know where it is? Oh, with his lawyer, I presume. Well, I'll have to give him a call. While I do, do me a favor, assemble the family in the drawing room for me. All right. I'm really not looking forward to telling Jacqueline the news. No? About what? Now you've got to promise me you're not going to say anything to anyone, especially Jacqueline. Not at least until I get to tell her this. She's not going to take kindly to the news. Decided to make some changes to my room. And I'm no longer going to leave my fortune to the family. I'm going to leave a real small portion of it. And the rest, I'm going to give away to those who truly need it. Really? Yes. Really. This god-awful fortune, you know... Sometimes I think I've given my family too much of the wrong thing. Either by mistake, or maybe because I wanted to maintain control. I should have encouraged Jacqueline to start her own business, so she could have something of her own. Or maybe I should have been a better father rather than a provider to Maeve and Eleanor. Oh, my sweet Eleanor. I see so much of myself in that kid. I know I'm getting old, and maybe it's too late, but I have to try and fix these things before I go. I'm sure you will, and for what it's worth, I think you're making the right decision. Thank you, Desiree. That means a lot to me. You know, you've always been a true friend. Have you ever read Moby Dick? No. It's a fantastic read. You should read it sometime. All right, I'll do that. (laughs) 